Warning, this video contains an aggressive looking apple that follows you in the dark. Viewer discretion if you're allergic to apples is advised. The idea for today's video was partly inspired by a suggestion on a community post by Octow who asked for a horror FPS with an AI following you. So we'll cover a few things including a first person controller, head bobbing, footsteps, an extended flashlight setup, and an enemy that follows you but freezes when you point the flashlight at them. We're starting with this basic setup where the left stick controls the player movement and the right stick controls the camera. We're going to add an intermediary box that we'll use later to control the up and down movement of the head for the head bobbing. You'll want to have that as only movable with a relatively small size of 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0.8 and a Y negative Y positive connection. We'll use a Y slide connector between the person and the box to control the up and down movement on the Y axis. We want to be bobbing the head whenever the player is moving to any degree. So we'll get two absolute value nodons, one for each of the inputs of the left stick. So whenever the left stick is being used at all, the value will be forced into a positive number and it'll fill out one of the inputs of the AND nodon, the other being supplied by the constant nodon. Then we can run it through a counter with a range of 0 to 15 set to bounce so that it goes up and down. We can put that input through a map nodon that takes the range of 0 to 15 and shrinks it down to 0.10 to 0.40. So we're taking that bigger range and making it more reasonable for the Y slide connector. And you can see it's already working. It's moving up and down based on this timing. You can change the number on the counter to make the steps take longer or less time. The next thing we can do is add footsteps. We can use the comparison nodon and check whether the counter is less than 1. We can get the 1 from the constant nodon we already placed. If it is less than 1, then we can set off a toggle. An easy way to do this is a counter with a range of 0 to 2 on a loop. So each time our original counter hits 0, it will toggle playing either the right or left footstep sound. There are not that many good footstep sounds that I could find, but you may be able to find something better. Now we've got both our head bobbing mechanic down and our footsteps. We're gonna disconnect those for now so that they don't bother us in the programming screen. Next, we can quickly add some small details that help flesh out any kind of horror level. Regardless of what BGM you use, you'll likely want at least one BGM node on set to ambient where you can adjust these ambient background sounds. The world nodon will also use to affect the lighting and the materials of the world. I want to end up at a pitch black lighting. To make it easier to see what we're doing for now, we can use the night setting. And I also like the sand for the world material. Now we can start building out a first person rig and the flashlight. Start with a head nodon and attach a box. The bigger the base box, the more stable things will be in my experience. So we'll use a size of 4.4, 2, and 0.8 with a connection point of center center, and we'll have it as only movable for now. This is gonna provide a sturdy base for our connections. We'll then use a free slide connector with three constants to control the X, Y, and Z positions. If you change your camera's field of view or use a different sized box at the beginning, you're gonna to want to adjust these numbers. We're going with something that I found to work well. We'll use 0.5, negative 0.4, and then what should be a zero. Then we'll move on to our cylinder, which will act as the flashlight. Our cylinder will have as X.3, Y.8, and Z.3. The connection points of Y negative and Z positive. So that looks pretty good for now. We can start to add our light sources. We're going to use the effect node on set to light with the effect location set to world, a connection point of Y negative, Y positive, and have it set to activate while not zero. What we want to do is offset the light effect from our flashlight. So it looks like the light from the flashlight has some distance. Two Y slide connectors with very small invisible boxes at the end that we attach lights to. The boxes and lights will have a connection setting of Y negative, Z positive, and we can adjust the distance from the flashlight using a constant node on, run into the connector itself, and then we can adjust the size of the light by changing the size of the effect node on. When you point towards the floor, the origin point of the light will be underground, so you won't see any light. To prevent that from messing with the lighting in the game, we can add another light effect to the top of the player's head. 
Here the connection settings will be center and Y positive. We can toggle turning our flashlight on and off with a simple button press node on connected to a flag and an AND node on that takes the flag output and the button to turn it off. That way the button press will either turn the flag on or off. You can connect that to the light effect node ons to turn them on or off and a trigger from zero if you wanted to add a sound. You should play around with the effect node on size and the distance from the flashlight to make a good looking light cone. It's not very easy and some things will still look a little weird, but I often prefer it to the big plain circle of light flashlight. in mind things will look very different between the night light setting and the pitch black light setting. It took me a while here to try and sort things out, but when I switched to pitch black I had to readjust everything basically. Now that our flashlight and our other horror elements are set, we can begin creation of our following angry apple person. We'll start with a person node on and we'll do a simple follow, which you've probably seen me do in a video before. You just get a location sensor attached to each character and then subtract to the players X and Z from the following person's X and Z. You set their movement settings to referencing the world and not the camera, and that will make a simple character follow. What we'll do if we want to toggle that follow is remove the connection from that subtraction calculate node on to the person and add another multiplication node on. That will let us either cut off or continue the signal of that movement to that person. We can use a touch sensor attached to the front of the flashlight set to a size of 3.2, 3.2, and 10 on the z-axis. Make sure to have it detecting the person object and with a connection point of Z negative, Y positive. We'll run that through a not node on so that when the sensor does not detect the person, they can follow. And when it can, they cannot follow. Now we'll use a simple sphere and a fancy object apple to create our small person. We'll set the apple to a size of 1.6 with a connection point of center center and we'll do just about the same with the box. We'll make our person invisible and connect these two textures to the sphere. Because they're on a sphere, they will kind of look like they're wrapping around the apple. We can try to do this with other fancy objects to sort of pseudo texture them, externally at least. Now when we switch to pitch black, we have our creepy looking apple that will follow you. We can have it set so that while the sensor detects the person, we'll make the apple calm. And when it is not detecting the person, we'll look at you menacingly and follow you around. He's just standing there, menacingly!